Here is yet another excellent essay by S. L. Kanthan. In George Orwell's novel 1984, the populace is made to view a short propaganda film that resembles a news documentary each day. The two minutes of hate is what it's called. The U.S. acts like this to its geopolitical adversaries like Russia and China. The disinformation effort against China is more intricate than the Russophobia that the West engaged in during the past 10 years, which explicitly prepared Americans and Europeans for war against Russia. The six justifications for America's ongoing yellow peril propaganda are listed below. Prevent the fury of Western voters. The vast majority of Americans and Europeans have seen stagnation in their living levels during the past 20 years. Since the 1970s, the American worker's median salary has remained unchanged. Since the financial crisis of 2008, almost all European nations have been on a flat line. The disposable income, or wages before taxes, has been increasing dramatically in China. Additionally, Chinese citizens have access to quality universal health care, nearly free universities, first-rate public transportation, pristine cities, 40,000 kilometers of bullet trains, and more. The biggest worry of Western elites is that their supporters will inquire as to why they cannot enjoy good things like the Chinese. Therefore, persistent anti-China propaganda is the greatest strategy to avoid this embarrassing situation. It is also reasonably prosperous. Whenever a positive truth about China is shared on social media, people start arguing against it. For instance, an image of a stunning metro in China might contain the captions made with slave labor or it's likely to break apart shortly. Brainwashing is effective. Dissuade nations and investors. Numerous alarmist YouTube videos, phony experts, like Peter Zion, and publications concerning the coming collapse of the Chinese economy are available. However, they first fulfill the already indicated purpose. Second, this aims to deter investors and other nations from investing in China, whether through the purchase of Chinese bonds or stocks, the direction of FDI, the participation in infrastructure projects, or the establishment of strategic connections with China. This tactic is known as FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, in a world of sales. Since 147 nations have endorsed China's Belt and Road Initiative and, as UBS chief recently stated, global bankers are positive on China, it is clear that this strategy is failing. We don't read the media in general. Justify all unethical and illegal behavior. In every manner, China is winning over America. The US is forced to use the Tanya Harding strategy of kneecap bashing because it can no longer compete. As a result, the US has imposed penalties on more than 500 Chinese tech firms. The U.S. successfully blocked the sale of a tiny German semiconductor company to China and pressured other nations to reject Huawei's 5G telecom infrastructure. It also urges Europe to break its ties with China. If China is portrayed as wicked, such unlawful, immoral, anti-capitalist, and anti-free market measures can be wholly justified. Make Muslims Hostile to China Many Muslim nations border China, and many Muslim countries are traversed by China's Silk Road railways. This is the reason the U.S. continuously sheds crocodile tears over Uyghurs. The intention was to sway Muslim nations' public opinion against China. Additionally, the U.S. can support and arm Islamist militants hostile to China, such as those operating in Pakistan, to obstruct the cpec built Gwadar ports. Once the general public is persuaded that China is committing genocide, they will see terrorist acts as an appropriate reprisal. But for the most part, this enormous scheme has failed. Nevertheless, China has received constant backing from the Organization for Islamic Cooperation, OIC. Even the currencies of Muslim nations feature Chinese infrastructure projects. And in December 2022, Xi Jinping attended the remarkable and first-ever China Arab Summit in Saudi Arabia, which was a sign of impending enormous geopolitical and geoeconomic upheavals in the region. Twenty Arab leaders flew to Riyadh to sign agreements with China. But, more significantly, the groundwork for Petro Yuan, which trades oil for Yuan, was laid. The American response, of course, was to saturate social media with complaints about the Uyghur genocide. When Xi Jinping's historic visit came to a close, the U.S. ambassador to China tweeted the following. Consider color revolution. 
the United States excels at this. American slash European hands have always been the puppet masters to varying degrees, from the Tiananmen Square protests through Hong Kong and even the most recent anti COVID lockdown protests. Some Chinese citizens can always be persuaded to become freedom icons and enjoy celebrity status in America thanks to the never ending anti CCP slash CPC propaganda. For the select few fortunate leaders of the color revolutions, there is also a lot of money to be made. Western corporatism poses a threat to the China model. Banks and businesses rule and govern the West. All politicians are bought and paid for by lobbyists and corporate overlords, who use them as their puppets. In China, the roles are reversed, the government runs the businesses. The dispute between the US and China is based on this fundamental issue. Conclusion Theoretically, freedom, democracy, and free market capitalism exist in the USA and the EU. But instead, they have an oligarchy, a predatory corporate culture, a neo-feudal economic structure, phony elections, and an astonishing but cunning kind of censorship. Because of this, the middle class is getting smaller, their economies are stagnating, and 75% of Europeans and Americans believe that their countries are heading in the wrong path. The GDPs of China, the UK, and France were roughly equal in 2005. But, then, as the economies of the UK and France remained flat, China's GDP experienced a startling seven-fold increase. However, the constant shock and awe traumas that the Europeans experience, financial crisis, COVID, conflict with Russia, and deindustrialization, keep them from critically analyzing what is happening to them. Instead of continuously bashing China, how about the elites in the US and EU work on their own failing system?